Hello there and welcome back to my channel. You should be excited because today's video has been highly requested. I'm gonna walk you through how I create Google Slides that I use for teaching every day from start to finish. These are slides that I create to help me flow through my lessons because chances are if I don't have slides, I leave out things or the lesson just does not flow as well. So these slides are really meant for me to keep me on track, but it also works really well for my students who are visual learners. I am gonna be showing you this tutorial through Google Slides. I was a loyal PowerPoint user for years and I loved PowerPoint but I will say I have converted to Google Slides. I really like the fact that it's stored online, but I can also save it in offline mode and I can easily access it on my computer at school and my computer at home. So if you have not already created a Google account, I highly recommend you do that. It is free. I will link it down in the description box and I'm gonna jump right into it. I always have Google Drive open on my computer pretty much 24 seven. So the first step is to open up a new New Google Slides document from Google Drive. I'm gonna go to new and then I'm gonna select Google Slides. It is gonna open up a new slideshow and you will notice that it puts a theme tab on the side. I usually just exit out because I don't really need that. The first thing I love to do is go through and delete the text boxes currently on the slide so that I have a blank canvas. So I'm just gonna click and drag to select them and I'm gonna click delete. The next step is to name my slideshow. Now I typically put all of the slides for a unit together. For example, I would put all of my math unit one slides together and all of my math unit two slides together. That way it's really easy for me to find what I need. So I'm gonna name this for example, math unit six slides. The next thing I always do is resize the slides. Now this is not a necessary step. The slideshow will automatically be in a widescreen format and that's great for slideshow presentations, but I personally like to resize my slides to be the size of a piece of paper. That way, if I need to print out slides for any reason, whether I'm leaving them for a substitute or maybe I print out slides for a student who has trouble seeing the board, I know that it's going to fit on a piece of paper. So this this is an extra step that I do. You don't have to necessarily do it. It's totally your choice. But if you do want to change the size of the slide, you're going to go to file and then page setup. It will automatically have widescreen. So you're gonna click the drop down and click custom. You can then type in the exact dimensions for the slide. I always like a landscape size. So I'm gonna do a width of 11 and a height of eight and a half. And I'm gonna click apply that will automatically resize my slides. The next thing I like to do is change the background. Now you can make your background super fancy. You can put pictures or patterns, but personally I like to keep it very simple and I just have a solid color in the background. But to fancy it up a little bit, I do like to kind of color code my slides. I will use different colors to represent different parts of my lesson, if that makes sense. And I kind of go in rainbow order. That way I know that they start with pink and by the time I get to blue and purple, I'm at the the end of my slides. I don't know if that makes sense for you. It may not work for you, but it works for me. So in order to change the background, I'm gonna click on background, no surprise, and then I'm going to select a color. Now, I'll be honest, I like to start with pink, but I do not like the pink color that is already here. It's more of like a magenta and I don't want a magenta, so I'm gonna create my own custom color. So I'm gonna click the plus sign down at the bottom, and then I'm actually gonna type in the hex code. So a hex code is just a code that identifies a specific color and every color has a different code. I actually have some that I have like memorized because I'm weird like that, that I really like. So the pink color I really like is FF0099FF and it's more of like a hot pink color. So I'm gonna hit okay and I'm going to hit done. Now the entire background is that solid pink color. The next thing I'm going to do is add in a white box. So I'm gonna go to the shape tool and I'm going to select a rectangle, which is just the first one. And I can just click and it will automatically add in like a square. Then I can go in and resize it. So I'm going to right click on the square and I'm going to click format options. Now I can type in the exact size. 
I like to leave a half an inch border on all of the sides. And if I have a half an inch on both sides, that means I want the width of the rectangle to actually be one inch smaller than my page. Since my page has a width of 11, I'm gonna make the width of this rectangle 10, and I'm gonna make the height seven and a half since the height of my slide is eight and a half. Then I can X out the formatting and I'm going to click and drag the rectangle and use those red guidelines to make sure that it is centered. Now I need to change the color of the rectangle and the border. So I'm going to select it by clicking on it. I'm gonna come up here to the fill bucket and I'm going to select white. That way any text I put on top is very easy to read. And I'm going to change the border to a solid black and I'm gonna make it thicker. I'm gonna go for eight point. That way you can see a clear defined black border. Now I'm ready to start putting text on my slide. I'm gonna start with the title. So I need to insert a text box. I'm gonna come up to the text box and I'm gonna start on the one side of my rectangle and click and drag to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my title text. So for example, if this is a new unit, I would put unit six. I do like to use all capitals for my titles. That's just a personal preference, but I do not like the Arial font that it defaults to. So I'm going to change the font. I can triple click to highlight all of the text and I'm gonna come up here to the font and I'm gonna change it. My personal favorite Google Slides font for the title is Oswald. It's a nice, bold, chunky font. I think it's very easy to read for both adults and students. I also need to change the size because I want it to take up a pretty good space. I like my title to be size 75 font. Not font, you all know what I mean. <laughs> now I'm going to center that text in the text box. So I'm gonna come over here to the align button. I want to center it horizontally as well as vertically. So I'm gonna select both options and I might make my text box just a little bit larger. There we go. Those of you who have seen my slides before, you all know that I love to put a black bar behind my title and then change my title color to white so it pops. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna move this title down just for now so it's out of the way and I'm gonna come back up to the shape tool and I'm going to select a rectangle. This time I'm going to click and drag it across and I didn't make it all the way across so now I can just click and drag the sides until I see that red line. That way I know that it's perfectly lined up with that rectangle. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm actually gonna move it back and then move it over so I can make sure it's right in line. Perfect. Again, I'm going to format this. I'm going to change it to a black fill and I actually don't need a border this time. I'm gonna select transparent because it already has a black fill. I do want it to be thicker, but I'm a perfectionist. I want it to be a certain height, so I'm actually going to right click and go to format options. That way I can choose the height that is exactly what I want. Let me start with one inch and see what that looks like. Eh, I think I want a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make it 1.5 inches. Nope, I think that's a little too thick. I'm gonna go 1.25. <laughs> a lot of this is just playing around until I find what I like and what I think looks good. So I'm gonna move it up just a smidge so I don't have so much white space above it. I'm now going to take the title and I'm going to center it in that black rectangle, but I need to change the color to white so I can see it. So I'm going to triple click in that text box to select it, and I'm gonna change the font color to white. Uh-oh, I didn't select the font, hold on. Oh, I deleted it. Oh, Michelle, hold on, hold on. Let's change it to white first, and then we'll put it in there. I'm gonna try this again. Click and drag. Okay, so I know what the problem is. I need to bring the text box to the front because I made the text box first and then the rectangle. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to order and bring to the front and now it is on top of the rectangle. The next step is to start adding in my body text. So this is kind of like my cover for my unit six slide. So I'm gonna put the title of my unit six. I'm making all this up as I go. So this is not a real math unit, but I'm gonna add in another text box. And again, I'm gonna click and drag so it goes all the way across and is the same size as my rectangle. For my body text, I really like the font Century Gothic. Again, it's a nice, clean, and easy to read font for both adults and students. I'm gonna make it larger. Let's go size 48 for now. And again, I like to center my text horizontally and vertically. Let's say that this unit is called fraction equivalence. 
quit. I, oh my goodness, y'all. It's been a long week, okay? It is a Friday. I'm recovering from the flu, so give me a second. Equivalence. There we go. I do need to make this text larger, so I'm going to highlight it. And let's go 96. Let's see what that looks like. Much better. It takes up more of the white space and just helps to fill that in. Once I have my cover slide, I'm actually going to duplicate it to create my next slide. That way I don't have to redo all those steps that I just did. So I'm going to come over to the side. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose duplicate slide. Now I have an exact copy of the slide I originally had. I always have my second slide be a table of contents. It just helps me keep track of my lessons. So I'm going to change the title to table of contents. And I'm now going to type in my lessons. So for example, maybe this unit has 10 lessons. I can do lesson one, lesson two, and I can already tell I need to make the font size smaller. So I'm gonna select them and let's go down to like size 48. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna align these on the left. That way I can actually create two different columns. So lesson one, two, lesson three, four, five. I'm now going to take my text box and I'm going to move it over so it only takes up half of the screen. And looking at these, I think I can make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to go size 60. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to copy and paste this text box. So I'm going to select it, right click, choose copy, and I'm going to right click over on the side and select paste. Now I can click and drag this text box so it is over on the side and make it sure it is nice and lined up. Oh no, there we go. Now I can go through and just change these numbers so I can make lesson six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now this list seems kind of pointless, but I promise it will end up being worth it. I actually like to hyperlink my slides from the table of content so that when I open up my unit slides, I can click exactly on the lesson I want and it will take me to that slide. It's a lot easier than scrolling. So we're gonna leave this slide for now and we're gonna come back to it. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide again. I'm now going to create my actual lesson slides. So my first lesson slide is usually our essential question. So for example, up at the top, I could put lesson one, and I'm gonna delete this other text box, and I'm going to drag that original text box all the way over, and I'm also gonna extend it up to the top and to the bottom just so it fills in the full space. So this would be where I type my essential question. Now, I wanna remember that this is my essential question, so I actually like to put that as a like subtitle underneath of my main title. So I'm actually gonna move this down a little bit to make space. I'm going to add in another text box, I'm gonna drag it across, and this is going to be my subtitle. So I might put essential question. I'm gonna make this that same Oswald font that I like, and I'm gonna make it bigger. Let's go size 60. Let's make it a little bit smaller just so I can see a difference between my title and my subtitle in terms of size. I'm going to center it horizontally and vertically in the text box. I'm gonna move the text box up, and I'm gonna shrink it just a little bit Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go through and add in my essential question and I'm making this up on the fly, y'all. So let's say lesson one is going to focus on what does it mean for two fractions to be equivalent? I can make this a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna select it and let's go size 66. Mm, go a little bit bigger, let's go 75. That's pretty good. Takes up a lot of this space. And I'm actually gonna drag this text box up to the bottom of my subtitle. That way the text is evenly spaced in between. So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide again. My next slide is usually my I can statement. So I'm gonna keep lesson one up there, but I'm gonna change this to I can statement. And for my text, I'm gonna say I can explain why two, two fractions are equivalent. Boom. I usually like to bold and italicize the verb. That way my students know what specifically they're focusing on. Now I'm ready to move on to the slides where the lesson is actually going to be taught. So that means it's time to change color. I like to keep my essential question and my I can statement that same pink color, and then I'll start to move on to my new colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide again, 
And now I'm gonna change the background color. So I'm gonna click on the background button and this time I'm gonna choose orange. I actually like the orange color that's in here, so I'm gonna select that and click Done. One of the first things I always like to do with my students is some type of fluency practice. So I'm gonna make that my title, Fluency Practice. With my fluency practice, this is where I do different games and activities. Sometimes it's a number talk, sometimes it's something with skip counting, and it changes all the time. So depending on what we specifically are doing, I'll make the subtitle match that. So for example, if I was doing a number talk, I would make my subtitle number talk. Then the text in here is where I would put the different things that I need for the number talk. Let's just say five times six equals, and then we would do maybe 50 times six equals, and then 50 times 60 equals, and so on. So I put my text in there that I need for the number talk. Now I'm gonna duplicate that slide and I'm gonna make my next one. Let's say my next one is some type of a word problem we're gonna do together. I'm gonna come back to my background and again, I'm gonna change the color. That way I know that it's the next step in my lesson. So I'm gonna choose yellow because I like to go in rainbow order. And let's say this is word problem practice. All right, this time my title is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna make it size 70. There we go, that made it fit on one line. And let's say this is focusing on using different strategies. Maybe I'm gonna have them show the problem solved with two different strategies. I would fill this in with the text for the problem. I'm just gonna put in the word text for now because you all get the point. And I'm gonna continue this process until I have all of the slides that I need. I do wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the hyperlinking. So just for sake of time, I'm gonna take this lesson one slide, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna drag it down. Let's say this was the start of my second lesson. So I'm gonna change this to lesson two, and maybe this one is focusing on how can I use an area model to represent equivalent fractions. Again, I'm gonna make this font size a little bit smaller. Perfect, okay. Now let's talk about hyperlinking. So I'm gonna come back up to my table of contents and I'm going to select the text that says lesson one. If I want lesson one to link to that beginning slide for lesson one, I'm going to right click it and I'm gonna click on link. Now this will allow you to link to websites, but it will also allow you to link to slides within your Google Slides. So right here, you'll see it says slides in this presentation. I'm gonna click the down arrow, and it will actually allow me to choose which slide I want to link to. If I look over here on the side, I can see that lesson one starts on slide three. So I'm gonna click slide three, and I'm going to click apply. I'm gonna repeat this process for lesson two. So if I scroll down, I can see that lesson two starts on slide seven. So I'm gonna come back up, I'm going to highlight the lesson two text, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose link, and this time I'm going to link to slide seven and I'm going to click apply. Just to show you all how this would work in the actual lesson, I would start with my beginning slide and I would present it. Once I'm in that presentation mode, I can move from slide to slide. Once I'm in my table of contents, I can click on the lesson and it will take me directly there. So for example, I can click on lesson one and it brings me directly to my lesson one slide. If I go back and click on lesson two, it takes me to my lesson two slide. This is a huge time saver, especially if your units are very long. For my reading slides, I actually make them for the entire marking period, which means they end up being like 300 slides long. So that table of contents is crucial. So I'm not spending time scrolling through and finding my lesson. So that is it. I mean, that's the basic tutorial of how I create the Google Slides. It's nothing fancy. I definitely could go into more detail in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends. I know personally, this style of teaching just works really well for me. It helps my day flow much easier. And I would love to hear what you all think. If you try this strategy with your instruction, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hit that subscribe button so you do not any future videos and the notification bell that way you're notified every time as always thank you for watching I love you all so much don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one
Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher store, my merchandise store, and my Amazon store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.